Welcome back. Today we're going to be installing this Western Digital 1TB Gen 4 NVMe solid state drive with a heatsink into our Alienware R13 Aurora. This heatsink really isn't super necessary as drives normally don't get hot enough to cause damage unless in a really airflow restricted PC case, but I snagged this one for like 8 bucks and it's going to look cool, so why not, right? Here's the instructions you want to pause and read. Let's get into it. First, as always, we're going to put on our ESD wrist strap if we have it. I'm going to go ahead and get my drive out for easy access later. I'm going to show you real quick how to install your drive into the heat sink following the instructions I showed earlier. Then we're going to go ahead and find our thin blue heat transferring pad and lay it down in the bottom of our heat sink tray. I grabbed the thicker one first by mistake. Don't forget to remove the plastic from the pad or it will not distribute heat and will be worse than if you didn't use a heat sink at all. Once you have the bottom end nice and flat, place your drive in the tray with the flat side down. That's going to be the bottom of your drive. And be sure to place the front a little further back than I did. I had to go back and take it apart after this because the screw hole was totally covered by the heat sink. Next we're going to grab our thicker blue pad and place it on, in the tray on top of the drive after we take off that plastic film. I would also recommend not using a knife to separate the plastic while it's sitting on your delicate drive, but as you can see I have no fingernails so I couldn't grab it. Go ahead and take our plastic off. Make sure it's pushed all the way down, sitting nice and flat. We'll go ahead and put our heat sink on. Now we're ready to screw it together. Let's get our screws out. Now I know I'm having difficulties getting the screw started, but it'd be much easier with a magnetic screwdriver. I just wanted to show that it is possible with the tool provided in case you don't have one. The extra screw at the end is going to be for mounting the drive to the motherboard of the computer, so don't lose it. Now inside the computer we're ready to go ahead and get our drive seated. It should be slightly tilted up when you go to slide it in and push it down to fit level with your motherboard. Then we're going to take our extra screw to lock it in. Somehow I got this on the first try so you shouldn't have too much problems getting it started. Get the screw snug and you have successfully installed your new drive in the computer. We're not done yet though, we actually have to tell the computer to see and use that extra space or you just wasted your time and money. Let's go ahead and click the search icon and type in storage spaces and open that up. And we want to create a new storage pool so the computer can use that new drive, it should show up. Click create pool and in this screen you can name the letter and the drive to whatever you want it to be. The resiliency type we want is simple, that way it just adds storage on top of what you already had. Unless you install that extra drive as a backup, then you're going to want to leave it as a two-way mirror, which keeps an exact copy of your existing drive on the new one in case one of them fails. Then go ahead and create storage pool when you're done to format your new drive. 
Congratulations on successfully upgrading the storage on your Alienware R13 Aurora. I'll leave links to all the products I use in the description, and I'll catch you in the next video.